and thanks for coming back. In the last video, I demonstrated the code for a grid strategy with Martingale. This was based on a request that I saw online. Since making that video and since writing the code and making the video, there's been a little more added to the request, which indicated that the volume appears to be linear until it reaches some point and then grows in what appears to be an exponential fashion. The code that I showed last time had the volume growing exponentially from the first trade. Now the request was made based on an expert and the best guess as to how that expert works. I haven't seen the expert and I haven't seen any of the numbers, but based on that additional description, I'm going to modify the last code such that there is still a growth factor where the trades will begin to increase from the first trade. And as I said last time, if you simply set the growth factor to zero, then there'll be no increase in size. But there'll be a point where I set a maximum recovery, which is going to be how far you want the price to come back before it reaches the average price and can close everything. So if you think about it, if without that, then if the price simply moves in one direction for an extended period, you get a lot of trades open, but the price has to come back a very long way to reach the midpoint, which is where it can close all of the trades for an average profit. By setting the maximum recovery, I'm going to be further increasing the volume such that you never need to come back any further than that maximum recovery distance. It's not a big change to the code I had last time, so we can get straight into the code and write that and then run a few tests and see how it impacts the results. So I've opened the editor here. I've already made a copy of the original mgrid.mq5. I've just renamed it to mgrid2. Uh, and so far all I've done is just change this comment, that version number, and somewhere down here, yeah, I changed the uh, comment here. The first change I need to implement is that I need to know how many pips you want to set as the recovery. So this will be the maximum amount that you want the price to move before it can close everything at the average price. So I'm calling this INP recovery pips and I'm just setting the default to 100. And then just as I've done with take profit pips and grid size pips, I'm going to convert this recovery pips one time into a double value. So I need a global variable to hold that. And then of course I need to fill this variable but there's a little more to this one than just that simple conversion. Firstly, this recovery pips, if you set a distance between trades of 20, for example, and you want a 10 pip profit, then when you enter a recovery of 100, you're expecting that to be 100 from the entry price until the take profit. I really only care about how far it is to the average price. So I'm going to subtract this take profit amount from the recovery. So when you enter 100, it's actually four and a half levels plus the 10 pips profit. And then one more thing I want to do is to allow you to not have recovery. So I'm going to put a condition here. And if you enter a recovery pips of less than or equal to zero, then it's going to be set to zero. And I'll use that as the test through the rest of the code to say that you don't want to use recovery. Now the rest of the code pretty much stands except for here where I'm calculating the volume. Because now I'm going to create a function because the volume calculation is a little bit more complex than just this one line now. So I'm having a function called get volume. I'll pass in the type, the data, which is the C leg data, and the open price, which I've already calculated. So creating this uh, get volume function. It starts out just as it did before. Volume equals the input volume multiplied by one plus the martingale factor raised to the power of the number of trades we have open. And then I still have this hack for normalized double. I haven't fixed that yet, but you know about that. This two is not always the right normalized double factor for volume, depending on the symbol you're trading. So the um, easiest way is just to have an input to change that. And so if you're trading something like the SPY, you might set that to zero. And if you're trading something like a currency, then leaving this at two is fine. But now I just need to do some calculations to determine if I'm still within that range where the average price is going to be less than or equal to that recovery size.
So what I'm doing is taking the data that's already there and calculating what the new values will be after I add the next trade. So a new vol total, a new vol price, and then of course the new average is going to be the vol price divided by the vol total. And now I just need a condition so that if the new vol total or the new average is within the appropriate range, then I can just return now without doing any more work. So if the recovery is equal to zero, that's the flag for saying you don't want to worry about recovery. Or the type is a buy and the new average is less than or equal to price plus recovery, then it's within the range. And the same for if it's a sell and the new average is greater than or equal to price minus recovery, then I can just return the volume that's already been calculated. So if I get to this point in the code, then I know that just following the standard approach for a volume calculation is going to be outside that recovery window. So now I'm going to calculate what my new average should be, which is just the recovery value added to or subtracted from the price. And now I need to calculate the volume required so that that new average will be the average, the weighted average, after I create this trade. And so the calculation itself, data.vol price, so that's the existing volume price, which is the total of the volume multiplied by the price for all existing trades, divided by the new average price minus the total volume of the existing trades, all of that divided by one minus the current opening price, which we passed in here, divided by that new average. And I'm just going to repeat the normalized double. Now this code can be simplified a little. For example, if recovery is equal to zero, I can simply jump out before all of this code. But I just thought this was a little easier to follow for the video. So if you want to simplify this, then go ahead. And then return the volume. And that's all that's required. Now I will point out here, when this volume calculation is done and then the normalized volume that follows it, it's entirely possible that calculating the actual volume required to reach this new average gets rounded down or rounded up. So it's not going to be exactly the new average that's being calculated here. It's going to be as close as you can come with rounding based on that volume. And now I'm going to run a test. I will use the same settings that I had before. I'll run one without the recovery and then I'll run another test with the recovery so that you can just do a comparison between the two. The same settings as before, Euro USD, three years from 22 to 25, starting with $2,000. The inputs, take profit at 10, spacing at 20, Martingale growth at 0.1, and recovery pips at zero at the moment. So that's the test as it would have been at the last video. If you look at the back test here, that's a profit of 10,177. The absolute equity drawdown was 474 and the maximum 1,597. So those are the important numbers here. If I go back to the inputs and I just introduce this max recovery and I'll put that to the default 100 and run this again. And that's the graph with recovery. A very similar pattern, uh, occasional large drawdowns, but a general upward trend. The drawdowns are bigger, and we'll go to the numbers in a moment, and you'll see that they are bigger. Uh, but I think the profit is increased. So let's just check that. So profit now is 1,000 or 12,477. So that's an extra almost $2,500 of profit. The absolute drawdown, 878. So that's almost doubled from the absolute drawdown previously. And the maximum drawdown, 2,374. That's $800, I think, larger than the earlier drawdown. So bigger drawdowns for the sake of recovering faster. And when I say faster, that doesn't mean recovering from a smaller drawdown. That means just in terms of time, recovering faster. I'm just going to run two more tests very quickly. I'm going to set the growth factor to zero and recovery pips to zero and then growth factor zero and recovery pips 100. Now this is the test with zero growth uh, and you can see the drawdowns are huge and the whole thing crashed here after about a year and a half. And that's mainly because with zero growth, the only time you'll close trades is if the price comes back 
at least halfway to where it started. So if you're coming off a peak price and then it moves to a lower range, it could sit at that lower range for a very long time. And then if it drifts a little further and a little further, then you get this massive drawdown like we had at the end here and just crashes the account. So zero growth is not necessarily low risk, uh, not in this case anyway. But if you have other things in play that might uh, mitigate the risk of a downward movement like this, perhaps you put something in play to test the trend and uh, shut this system down if it's moving in that direction, then it might work. But just showing as this stands, a zero growth gives you this kind of pattern. Now, one more test. I know I'm not going to worry about the numbers for this zero growth because obviously it crashed. Um, I'm going to give one more test with zero growth and a recovery. So set my recovery there to 100 and try again. So here's the result with zero growth and a maximum recovery of 100 pips. Now, obviously, maximum recovery doesn't mean absolute zero growth. The zero growth is just referring to that initial period where we're simply adding a factor onto every new position. Once it reaches that 100 pips away from the average, then the growth does kick in because of the averaging requirement. Again, similar pattern, drawdowns, general upward trend. If we look at the numbers, the profit here, 10,607, only slightly more than the profit with a growth of 0.1. You can see there, profit 10,607, drawdown 406, and maximum drawdown 1815. I'll just put a table up on screen of all of those results. So you can see for comparison, and having a growth factor plus a recovery gives the greatest profit, but it also has the greatest drawdown and max drawdown. A growth factor with no recovery gives the lowest profit, and a no growth factor with a recovery gives something in the middle. But then having no growth factor and no recovery, which should be the least risky, crashes the account. Now at this point, if someone hasn't already hit the comment button, there will be someone out there thinking that this is a bad strategy, drawdowns are too high, I shouldn't be recommending this. So let me just say this again. I don't make recommendations. I'm not recommending this strategy. I don't give advice. I show you how to write code. And then you can take that code and use all the things you learn from it to implement your own strategy. I'm just showing you how to write the code. If you're looking for someone who will give you a strategy, like some kind of magic ATM or just throw money at you, then there are plenty of channels on here that have weird and wonderful indicators that show you when to enter exactly, and they show results over carefully selected date ranges to demonstrate that you can make a profit, and they release these almost every day. So you probably want to go and find one of those channels. And yes, I have selected the inputs and the date range here because it works. And that's because demonstrating the code to you with a back test that simply crashes doesn't really achieve anything. Those are the results from this test, and it's demonstrating a different method of martingaling where you're setting the maximum recovery distance. So if this has been useful to you, click the like button. If you want to see more of these videos, then click subscribe. And if you click the bell icon, then with luck, you'll be notified the next time I release one of these videos.